did my hair. One, two, three, and we are live. Jason, how are you, sir? Good, how are you, sir? Man. Thanks for having me. How long How long we know each other? I'd say about 30 years. About 30 years. No, I'm kidding. You did, yeah, a little bit. You used to have her, right? I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's just catching up. <laughs> well, my guest today is a longtime friend. Um, we know each other for a long time, uh, three decades, and uh, Jason is a police officer here and framing him, uh, and he's a martial artist for a long time as well. Uh, Jason, tell us about yourself. Um, I'm a Framingham police officer. I've been with them um, almost 19 years, and I've been doing martial arts, I'd say, since, um, I'd say since the 90s. Since the 90s? Since the 90s. 90s. No, you started at uh, Framingham PD as what? A dispatcher, I started right? as a dispatcher, and wow. then um, I took the test and got on as a police officer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like we were talking uh, 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 off camera, uh, the goal of this podcast is to educate people out there, mm -hmm. uh, over 40, men over 40 that wants to start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or maybe another martial arts, but uh, they are afraid to get hurt and uh, they don't know how to start, okay. what to look for. Sure. All right. And I know you've been practicing martial arts for a long time. So how long has been your journey with martial arts, Jason? I'd say, um, I think it even maybe goes back before the 90s. Um, when you're a kid, you watch all those kung fu movies and you want to be Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris. So you check out different martial arts and um, you always think every school you join is going to be it. That's going to be the one. And then sometimes you join in they have some name that nobody heard of and um, <laughs> you know you know right away when they start to try and get you to join that black belt program that might not be the school to join um, so I, I've tried a, a few different schools that practice different martial arts but um, my journey led me to uh, jiu-jitsu and um, and that's a it really that really started in the 90s my first serious martial arts school that I um, that I clicked with I clicked with the teachers I clicked with the students and I realized this is where I needed to be and it's I, it's funny it's funny when you say about the movies because when you say well I watch a Bruce Lee movie and I got mm -hmm. hooked people think it's cliche people think you're full of it but it is I mean if you talk to anybody out there mm -hmm. most of most most people that are black belts right now mm -hmm. they started because they saw a Bruce Lee movie or, or a Chuck Norris movie because think about it back then we didn't have the internet right I mean you went to the movies yeah. this the, you know Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee, yeah. uh, Chuck, Chuck Norris. That was that was the thing. Yeah, that was. You know, there was no phone to be looking at all the time. You watch TV. No iPhone. Saturday, no smartphone. Movie, yeah. Saturday movies or wrestling, or you went to the movies and and like who wouldn't want to be Bruce Lee? And um, you know, even back then, the biggest thing for me was all the times when people would try and hit him and he would move out of the way. You know, and I thought that I always thought that was amazing. Not even hitting the other person back, just getting hit and just moving small body movements, moving out of the way, redirecting. I thought that was amazing. And uh, yes. I, I, I thought like, is that really possible? Can someone really throw a punch full blast at you? And you don't even try and like hit them back, you just move. Right. And I thought that was amazing. Right. What amazes me about Bruce Lee, since we're talking about the movies, is how much ahead of his son he was. How much Absolutely. ahead of him. And sometimes I ask myself, if he was alive, what kind of master would you would you have today if he's still alive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with all the technologies, with all the styles, uh, with all the knowledge mm -hmm. available to you. Mm -hmm. Now think about this, you know what I mean? A lot of people yeah. say, well, if he was alive, he's been doing jiu-jitsu, of course. Right. Because he was studying everything. He was right. studying boxing, uh, uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Judo. Judo, mm -hmm. he was practicing mm -hmm. taekwondo with yeah. master, master, uh, the late master, John He. Uh, it, he, I mean, it was an amazing I know, career. I know he did judo with a judo, Jean LaBelle. Jean LaBelle? Yeah. Jean LaBelle. I, I, I think the people that we would consider masters now, you know, who unequivocally people would recognize as masters, especially in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu like Kicks and Gracie, even people like Kicks and Gracie would have to give it up for people like Bruce Lee to say that he was ahead of his time, not just stick with one thing, but learn everything, put it together and blend it, make it your own. You don't just have to stick with one traditional martial art. That's great. But to be able to put it together, like you said, with judo, with jujitsu, with, you know, with uh, kung fu, with wing chun, and, and, and learn all the levels. 
you know, what they wanted to cover in mixed martial arts. Bruce Lee was already talking about that in his time and doing that. Exactly. Jason, how, how martial arts change your life for people that are listening right now? Wow. What aspects of your a, life that's, that's better a, because that's of martial arts? Um, Keep talking. I think um, the way martial arts has changed my life is it, it's made it better. Um, I think it makes you a better person. I think it, it's kind of a journey it, that never ends. I think it, it makes you, it forces you to learn, make you learn, know yourself better and become a better person. Um, not just like learning how to fight or beat people up. It's learning how to defend yourself, but it's also in your mind how to think before you act. Um, how to sometimes, um, I don't know if stubborn would be the right word, but you never quit. You know, just like a, someone going through a special force training, like a Navy SEAL or a Green Beret, or someone going through a BOPI training in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very hard, and, and a normal person would quit and not want to finish it because it's beyond what our, our norms can, can handle, I think, mentally and physically. And I think through your martial art journey, you're going to get to different parts of your martial art journey where it's going to be hard and you might not want to continue because it gets, you know, it, it can get strenuous mentally and physically, but you don't quit, you stay with it and a, and a good teacher and your students will help push you through. But it's a, it's a fight that you have to fight with yourself to never quit and to continue on your journey, I think. So I think in light, it's helped me with that philosophy a lot to um, never quit, never give up, um, to try and always um, not just react, but always think before I act, before I speak. and. Just try and be a better person overall. I know there's always someone better out there than you to be humble and be good to people. And hold that thought because you said something very powerful. You said it's always somebody out there better than you. I was watching a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody interviewed David Goggins. I don't know who, uh, if you know who it yeah, is. The Navy SEAL. The Navy SEAL. Yes. That guy is unbelievable. Uh, the reason I'm saying he's unbelievable because he walk the talk. He does. You know, a lot of people say, well, let's get motivated, do this, do that. But if you look at the guy's life, I mean, he I've never done it. anything hard. Yeah, he does. He it. done it. Yeah. He done it. Continue do it. And he said, motivation is crap. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have to be driven. You because you said the word earlier, stubborn. Yeah. You have to be driven because he goes, he, he goes and says like that. Motivation go comes and goes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But if you're driven, right. okay, yeah. you're gonna persevere. You're gonna do it no matter what. And you have to. Yeah. You have that goal, and you want to reach it, and you don't want anything to stand in your way. And that's the message I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pass to our viewers uh, about that. Because if you are forty-five right now, and you said, "Geez, I want to start martial arts," it's got a lot of demons in your head saying, "Hey, man, you're too old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're too old to start it." Right. Right. Uh, this is a young man's uh, game. Okay. And I hear that from yeah. a lot of people, you know, because I talk to a lot of people in our age bracket and it yeah. says, man, why you don't try martial arts? Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu is amazing. Yeah. It's going to work your whole body. It says, man, I went to a dojo and just watching the people roll. It's all young guys, man, because they get intimidated by, by right. the trolls uh -huh. and, and, and the, the groundwork right. and the smashing. You know yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. You're doing it for a long time. Yeah. So uh, what I want you to, to explain is... If you are 45 right now and you want to start jiu-jitsu, what kind of school, according to you, okay. right? What sure. kind of school this guy should look mm -hmm. and what kind of jiu-jitsu he wants to practice? Okay. I think the best advice I could give that has always worked for me is when, um, even when I wanted to get into Brazilian jiu-jitsu myself, coming from tradi a traditional jiu-jitsu background was... I would find what schools were in a local driving area to where I live. I would find the call the numbers and I would call um, the school and I would ask them, hey, I'm interested in coming, checking out your school. Would it be okay to come? Would it be okay to watch a class? Right. And then I would find out what time and I would go. And I thought my best reference would be to sit um, as a visitor and watch the class and mm -hmm. see how the teacher interacted with the students because it could be jujitsu it could be kung fu it right, could be any, right. it, it's the teacher that makes to watch it. his demeanor to watch his demeanor teaching style right H how he teaches how he actually treats the students as human beings right and i've been to enough schools and been doing martial arts along where like a lot of times in the old days the teachers a lot of times you know they'd be you'd be the uke you know and they'd be practicing on you you'd be the bad guy and even when you're tapping they kept doing it, it was like an ego thing like you're always getting hurt always getting messed up always you know, getting a rib cracked, and 
I wanted to go to, a, I wanted to find a school where I didn't, I wasn't afraid of um, getting dirty and, you know, uh, you know, even if I had a bully, but I wanted to go to school where the teacher was a good person and cared about us and treated us well and, and wanted us to, you know, almost like he was the grandfather and taking care of his grandkids. You know what I mean? Like, like a watchful eye over us. So when I went to a school, that was my biggest thing is how did he teach the class? How did he treat the students? Did he have a chip on his shoulder? And was he good to the students? And how were the students in that class? And, and I went to many, many schools and I checked out many, many classes. I thank the teachers all the time. Thank you for having me. I'll let you know, I might come back. And then that's how I found the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school I was looking for by that. So I think that's the best process is, it's hard to say what specific school you should go to. The best thing you should do is find the schools and go and just watch the class. Sit down as a guest and just watch it. Fantastic. And you'll know if that's the class for so, you. So let's recap. So you're saying go to several schools and watch the teacher's demeanor. Absolutely. How he treats the students. Absolutely. Look the atmosphere yes. see, and I'll see how they interact with each right. other. You know, talk to a few to a few uh, students. Right. What do you think? I think you that's think actually that's a great idea. Yeah. To, because the students, are, you know, the, the, the people that you're watching training are the ones who are there all the time. So actually, if you could talk to them and ask them, hey, what do you think of the school? How do you feel? How long have you been training here? And I, I think that's a great judge. When I was at my school, jiu-jitsu school for a long time, people, I would be happy to talk to people and, and, and talk to them, tell them about my journey, but, you know, tell them about the school, you know, specifics itself. You know? Because that, uh, th this is unbelievable uh, uh, helpful because that, Anybody watching you right now and listening to you right now, even if you are a school owner, mm -hmm. this is going to be very useful. Absolutely. Because think about it. I, I, I have been in school, you know, just watching, like you said, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing the teachers ask the higher belt to teach the class mm -hmm. and go to his office or in the cell phone all the time, and you see people doing things they're not supposed to do yet. Right. Right. And, and, uh, and I think those students, it's it, it's okay once in a while if they teach, you know, for a senior student, but I think in the most part when you find a school and you might go, so Josh, you might be the teacher, mm -hmm. I'm going there. I joined that school because of you. Yeah, exactly. You're the reason why I'm there. So exactly. when I go there, I want you teaching me. I don't want a senior that'll teach me. I want you, it, it, it's okay once in a while to once work on a, a specific while, thing right. or... You need to work on your judo roles. You know the teacher's gonna teach a class. I'll help you with this. Mm -hmm. But when I go to that school, I'm going there. I, the reason, the thing that got me to join was mainly that teacher. So if that teacher's not gonna be on the mats teaching me and always in the office on a phone or doing stuff, I'm gonna probably disappear and find another school. You know exactly. And I'm seeing that happen a lot. Uh, it's getting better, but in the '90s, you remember in the '90s when Royce Gracie won the first tournament was very, very hard to find the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was, I opened my uh, karate uh, studio in the 90s. Okay. Right, right downtown Framingham. And back then, uh, I knew a few guys that was practicing in Boston, but he, I mean, it was not a, a, a full blown Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school back right. then. Now you have a lot of options right now. Right. You know, I think Jet Hoy Space back then that was the start. Exactly. Yeah, that was the start. Exactly. It's been a long time. Ninety three, right? Yes. The first tournament. And now they're on UFC, what is it, two thirty three maybe? Or yeah. getting close to that, yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah. I got away watching that. I used to I used to I used I used to watch every single one of them. Me too. And then it just became I don't know, uh, I lost interest, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is, it was and it is a great vehicle mm -hmm. to uh, showcase martial arts. Right. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great uh, uh, vehicle to do that. But uh, not everybody uh, it wants to train martial arts to be the next UFC fighter. Correct. Yeah. What I tell, I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but what I tell the, uh, the school owner out there, okay, mm -hmm. is this. How many MMA guys you're gonna have in your school that's gonna pay you enough mm -hmm. to be able to make a living and pay the bills? Right. Right? Not many. Yeah, not many. Right? Not many. Yeah. Unless, unless yeah. you are a superstar trainer. Right. Uh, then, but the regular guy that has a school in Framingham, in Milford, in right. Smalltown, 
I mean, you want you want right. the guy that works in the office. You right. want the police officer that patrols patrols your seat. Right. You want those guys. They right. they don't want to they don't want to get hurt badly. Right. And and at the same time too, those schools will always unless like you said, they're a famous trainer training exactly. everyone. Yeah. They have to teach kids because if they don't, most jujitsu schools I saw that don't teach kids, that only teach adults, and then the adults come and go. You know, a lot of them never, don't survive or they can't afford to keep going. But the ones that bring kids in and teach kids too. Kids want to come, they want that structure. Mm -hmm. Almost like a Taekwondo school. Mm -hmm. So that's where the school will survive and make their money. It almost seems like it's a necessity to teach kids unless you're a famous trainer that everyone's coming, like Jackson Wing, coming all over the world to train with. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but the funny part right now, I was I was reading this survey that somebody sent, sent me. Do you know Taekwondo and Karate is still the number one uh, styles in terms of oh, really? reta stud student retention. Wow, that actually surprises me. I, I would not. Um, that would not be my exactly. Yes. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is go okay. it's, it's growing. Okay, but uh, Taekwondo and Karate is okay. the number one in the United States mm -hmm. for student uh, retention. Wow. Believe it or not, it's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. But, uh you you talk about something very important in the beginning. You said nobody. Teach uh, the philosophy behind the martial arts, right? Because I think let's it's lost. because let's say, uh, and I hate to keep bringing Bruce Lee here, but okay. uh, one of his, you know, I think it was the last interview. He said to the, to the interviewer, he said, "Before I studied the art, a punch was a punch, mm -hmm. and a kick was a kick." Mm -hmm. And he says, Bef "After I understood the art." Mm -hmm. The punch was a punch. The kick was just a kick. So the guy says, I don't understand what you're saying. What are you saying? Is he saying the same thing? He said, no, before I I understood the, the, just the physical part of it. Right. Uh -huh. And now I understand the martial arts mm -hmm. is way more than the physical. Right. He said, it is a vehicle to overcome my own mm -hmm. weaknesses. Right. Is that beautiful? Why? Because let's is, face yeah. it, if you are seventy-five, we're not a spring chicken. Right. Let's let's right. Let, let's <laughs> let's settle that. Okay. I mean, how many? Five, right. I mean, you you're not gonna go to UFC. I'm not going to the UFC, right. right? For me, martial arts has so much to offer besides the physical aspect. Right. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Is the yin yang is the balance? Correct. I understand yeah. that yeah. you're gonna take care of your health, your physical. But the spiritual part has to be in balance too. Absolutely. Okay. The nutrition has to be there. Mm -hmm. The work has to be there. Yeah. Family has to be there. Mm -hmm. So life is a balance. Okay. Yeah. And martial arts true. has so much to offer besides the technique mm -hmm. that everybody's missing the boat. I right. Because I, I was talking to a, a, a mutual friend okay. of us of ours, and I told him, I said, listen, you should cater. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. to the guy that works across the street, mm -hmm. the businessman mm -hmm. that doesn't want to get a black eye, right. he wants to go train, learn self defense, yeah. get a little sweat, and mm -hmm. come back. Right, right? he yeah. wants to learn how to get out of it of a mount position, mm -hmm. he wants to know how to get out of a guillotine, mm -hmm. he wants to know how to deflect, uh, deflect the punch and mm -hmm. maybe throw the guy in the ground and run. Yeah, but he doesn't want. To have a black guy because next day he is in a conference call, right? Right? He is in a meeting with his employees, yeah. right? And this person is scratching his head. Well, I think you're right, yeah. but people never take action. Listen, right. these are the people that need you. Yeah. You and, know what and I mean? You're talking about this too. Reminds me of my past black eyes, cracked noses. Surgeries. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, even when you. What about go, knees? How yeah. many people go to <laughs> getting <laughs> knee surgeries? Even you know? when you, even when you, when you get hurt, it, it, it's true. Um. And, and I think, you know, any martial, any fighter, any martial artist, anyone can punch someone else. Anyone, you can always find someone to beat somebody up. Um, but, the, you know, I think the true martial artist that's becoming a teacher, whether he was a good fighter or not, but he can really teach is to be a great teacher, especially a jiu-jitsu teacher, you have to be able to have control. I think control is something that's lost on people. You, you could have, there's always that one person in your class, in your school, who who doesn't know how to change his control, he always goes on 10 with everyone, a new person, a, a younger person, a kid, a, a, a new person coming to the school, a 50 year old wants to learn Jiu Jitsu. So I think what I found was the longer you do martial arts and, and when you become a better 
you know, a higher level, not just a black belt, but a higher level of martial arts is when you can bring a 50 year old person who's never done martial arts and, and go easy with them and not hurt them and show them stuff, but keep it real. And at the same time, the next day a UFC fighter comes in and he wants to train with you, you can turn it up. You exactly. Know? But then you get a 15 year old kid who, who's just strong but never done martial arts, so you can turn it back down again. I mean, you're not going to be throwing your elbow in a 15 year old kid's face, but people do that. So I think the better, you know, the more humble you become, the more in your uh, in your martial art journey and a better martial artist you become, I think you, you, you have that control. That's the biggest thing is not just getting to your black belt, but being able like a volume on a radio that you can turn it up or down and know who you're training with and know who, and some people have that and some don't. And I think, um, and I think that's part of your martial art journey to get to that level where you can have that control. You know, or, or you train with a partner who's getting ready for a fight, the last thing he needs is you hurting him. Now he can't have his fight. So you can maybe turn it down to five or six and roll with them and keep it real and give them some resistance and help them work through, through the flows of drills and arm, you know, arm bar to this, to neck to guillotine, you know, from side mount to full mount. And I think that's how you learn and that's how you become better by being able to do that. But if everyone you train with was just giving you, you know, elbows to the face all the time and really trying to hurt you all the time, you're never going to get better. You're never going to get to that next level. And I think that's where martial arts is. You know, like you become a black belt, now you want to get your first degree, second degree, and you want to get to that red belt, mm -hmm. you know, a coral belt, you know, and I think that's where your martial arts journey should take you. So let me ask you this question. So what you're saying is, don't let ego hurt you. Correct. And, and, and that's not, it's not easy either. That's, it's, it's true, not just the ego. Because when somebody grabs you in an arm bar and says, well, man, I'm yeah. going to resist a little bit more instead right. to tap. So what you're saying is, if it is hurting, right. just tap instead to get hurt. They always say, look, to fight another day. And again, I'm guilty of being stubborn. I never wanted to tap. I know you I are. To tap. I'm very stubborn. Uh, like if it, I had a biceps about this big, I'd be stubborn. It, 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 it has helped me a lot. But at the same time, I have had injuries sometimes, and I wish I wasn't so stubborn. But I think that's one of the biggest, when you talk about the uh, mental journey of martial arts is, is to conquer exactly what you're saying, to conquer that ego, get rid of that ego. And it's not easy for anybody. And, and, and I think that it's a constant thing you're always working on the rest of your life, just trying to become a, not just a better martial artist, but a, being a better martial artist is helping you become a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said about the UFC too, remembering, you know, the UFC is sport, you know, that is, that's martial arts to an extreme level, but at the same time, you have there's a difference between sport and bujitsu and budo, you know, and knowing what a that lot is. of people don't know. What yeah, it is. and 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 I think that's it's that's up to the, the each way. teacher should give that push for that education so they understand what it is because you know the ancient samurai they weren't doing sport jujitsu. Oh no! When they fought, it was, it for was their life, life for their life, life in that yeah, situation, my friend. Yeah. Was not a trophy. Yeah, was to no. keep your head in a place. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping your head was a oh, trophy. That's a trophy. That was yeah, the trophy. Having going home to your clan or your. You know, and, and keeping your head and representing your liege, you know, your, where you came You're from. You're talking about the samurai. Uh, my girlfriend, of course, she doesn't know what, what uh, Bushido is. So I explained it to her. I said, listen, uh, when you have... People talking about extreme ownership. Let me tell you something, my friend. Okay. You want to know about extreme ownership? Mm -hmm. Is when the shotgun came to you and said, Jason, you have three days to fulfill this mission. And in the end of the three days, you are a samurai. You didn't fulfill that mission. You go back to that, to, yeah. to your to your lord, yeah. and you you perform this sepulchral, sepulchral yeah. to show you would, sorry. That would be the only way to keep your honor and your family's honor. Yeah. Exactly. But people today criticize. Well, I'll never do that. Of course you won't, because that's so, culture. Right. That's and, culture. And, and honor and integrity these days seems to be a lost. Um, oh, it's lost. It's lost. Because people people talk yeah. about. A lot of schools these days talk about uh, honor. Mm -hmm. Some people talk about brotherhood, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just empty words. Right. That's what I they was going to say. Do it. they really mean it? Exactly. When somebody mm -hmm. taps you in the yeah. back and says, "Hey, brother," they don't know the weight right. of the word carried. Right. You know, we are we're or, both. Or big. even where the term brother came comes exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's heavy. When you said. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the code of samurai, but she asked me, she, but they, they went to that extreme. I said, they, they did. Mm -hmm. And I told her, mm -hmm. so listen, was that code, mm -hmm. right? Those principles that yeah. is still ingrained mm -hmm. into the, 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 the Japanese culture that made Japan overcome mm -hmm. two atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. 
overcome all that. And let, and, 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 and let me tell you this, Jay, Japan is the size of the state that I was born in Brazil. Because okay. it's a little, a little smaller than the state that I was okay. born in Brazil, mm -hmm. just for perspective and size. Okay. And for Christ's sake, they are an island on top of a volcano, right? Yeah. Try that for size. And they are on the, one of the powerful, one of the most powerful nations in the world, mm -hmm. in every yeah. aspect. Think about that. Yeah. That's the samurai code right there. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. Like you said, most of these martial arts schools, they lost the Do, they lost the Dao yep. or Wei, right? And they're not teaching that to their students because they think that people uh, would not appreciate that. Right. Right? And, and I'm here to tell you it's wrong. I mean, if you are a sensei, whatever your title mm -hmm. is, a coach, mm -hmm. it is your job to fulfill that need. I think to, to have those ethics too. I, talking about this too reminds me, I always carry a challenge coin with me and this is a challenge coin I've been carrying that actually talks about those ethics. About oh, look Bushido. at that, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. And that, it's just like a constant kind of reminder to have. That's, you know? that's a reminder folks right there. That's a challenge coin that Jason carries all the time mm -hmm. and, and says, it's almost like, you know, I, you know, you live by a code. I, I feel like I live by a code. I want to have honor and integrity. And that kind of reminds me in my pocket every day. And one side, it says Bushido, it says integrity, respect, courage, honor, compassion. How heavy is that word? Honesty mm -hmm. and loyalty. Mm -hmm. And talking about one of the principles here that my father used to tell me all the time, which is loyalty. Yes. And, and just remember, because we're both Masons, mm -hmm. all right? And loyalty is one of the tenets of Freemasonry, right? Mm -hmm. So my father told me, he says, I can't tolerate anything mm -hmm. from you, but be loyal. Yeah. He said to me, mm -hmm. be loyal. Yeah. Be loyal to the people that is watching your back. Be loyal to your family. Be loyal to your friends. Mm -hmm. I never forgot that, he said. You, you can be anything, mm -hmm. but never be disloyal. Right. You know, the other principle he used to tell us all the time is being grateful. He says, never be an ungrateful person. Always be grateful for everything that people give you, you know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's, it's funny that loyalty is right here. Yeah. Loyalty, that's, I, that's big. I, Thanks I, for sharing. My, my pleasure. I, you know, these are things too, like, you know, when our kids, you know, we instill in our kids, we want them to have that integrity, the loyalty to, you know, family and no matter what, you know, everyone has each other's back, you know. Talking about Jiu Jitsu, Jay, uh, what is the biggest, what, what was your biggest challenge learning? Remember the first day. That, let's go yeah. back to the, your first day, day number okay. one, <laughs> and with the white belt, yeah. didn't know what's going on. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge to Jason? I think is the first There were so many, the right? first, <laughs> There were so many. The first thought in my head was, wow, am I ever going to be able to learn this? Am I ever going to be able to retain it? Am I ever going to be proficient in this? Will I actually be able to be proficient in this? Um, and then it almost seemed like so much at a time. And then... Um, it's overwhelming, isn't it, it? It was overwhelming. And, you know, you think back then, like, will I ever be a black belt in this? Will I ever get to that level? Will people respect me? Will I actually really, in a real-life situation, will I be able to fight with this? Or all these techniques or principles that the teacher is showing me, well, when I leave here, are they still going to be in my head? Not realizing then that a lot of it was just to practice, you know? So I, I think that was my first kind of um, the way I felt about going to martial arts, you know? Mm -hmm. So going, go, going to school right now, mm -hmm. if you compare to Jason, that white belt many, many years ago, and you look back, you know, how happy are you by taking that decision to, to start training? Very happy. I, I think uh, for me, um, I, I think for me it was a life changer more internally for me. You know, with the way, you know, the way I am as a person, it was a life changer for me. Um, not only did I get to meet, to learn martial arts and become a better person and be able to, to better protect myself, but at the same time, I made um, great friends, great, um, great, you know, great, great relationships, networking, you know, great people I got to meet, you know, like you through my martial art journey, that if I wasn't in mar my martial art journey, I never, you know, we, exactly. our, our paths never would have crossed. Exactly. Exactly. And all the different people in my life through training, people 
who didn't want to compete in martial art con tournaments that I did, but they helped me train and sacrifice their time to help me because they were my brother and they cared. And, mm -hmm. um, and those are the people like that you never forget that they were selfless to help you go forward. And teachers who were always checking on you if you ever got hurt, you know, they were concerned about you. So um, it, it's, I think it's, it's changed. I couldn't imagine my life without martial arts in my life. You know, without martial arts. And that's that's fantastic. I, I couldn't imagine. I watch I watched an interview with Hanzo Grace, and of course, you know who he is. Absolutely, uh, very popular member of the Gracie family. He mm -hmm. said he sees jujitsu uh, jiu everywhere. Mm -hmm. What he meant by it, it was because he's doing it for so long. Yeah. Even when he's try he's trying to to talk to someone that wants to fight with him in the streets mm -hmm. or. or or even in business, mm -hmm. he applied uh, the leverage that you apply okay. in a physical jujitsu sure. technique. Uh -huh. He tried to he tried to use that in everyday life. Do you see uh, with the same eyes? I I do. Um, I think too is the reason I'm asking yeah. is because in your profession, right? And I was a police officer for a long time too. I know the challenges that you face every day. Right. Not as not as much like we faced in Brazil, but it's still when you leave home, sure. there is always the possibility, right, right, right yeah. there lingering over yeah. your head, absolutely, that you could get yourself in a tough situation, absolutely, right. You you can get into a position that you have to defend yourself, mm -hmm. defend your life, right, right. So how much of 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 your overall knowledge of martial arts that you that, that translates into your job in sure. your life? I would say a big part of it is just your overall sense of being of where you are, seeing things happen around you. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they say people walk around in La La Land, that bad things happen and they have no idea something bad is about to happen. They have the Pollyanna glasses on. Yes, but at the same time, you don't want to walk around totally paranoid either. Sometimes I call it like cold yellow, like you're aware, everything is good, but if something's happening, you see it right away and you recognize it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, and as you go on your martial art journey, is like you don't you realize as you get older, you don't need to fight everybody. You don't need to have fists with everyone. So even like you said, Royce Gracie in a business situation, um, you, I, I think as you go, the more even better of a martial artist you become, you, you can use your mouth, your words, your your mind without having a fight and knowing how to talk to someone who might be elevated up here and bring them down or de-escalate the situation. Because in your mind you're saying, okay, I'm confident if I have to fight, I have to fight, and I think I'll be okay. Not thinking I can beat everybody up. You don't know that. There's, like you said, there's always someone better, but at the same time, that's gonna be my last resort. Just like if you ever had to use your gun, that's only if you're in imminent danger. You know, It's your last resort to protect your life or the lives of others. So that's why you know being able to use your mouth and your verbal and get through to someone without having to use a tool on your belt or your hands or your feet um, that's kind of the level you want to get to. So as a police officer in everyday life, um, with situations, whether in work or out of work, that's where I'm always trying to see if I can use my mind more, my mouth more to talk to people and de-escalate them and get through to them or get on the same level of, of them with empathy and, and see you know, see if I can connect. So you always have those situations where no matter what you do, someone, it, it's something you know could happen. And that's you know few and far between and you have to be ready for that. But at the same time, you're constantly exercising your skills, I think, with your mind and your mouth, of um, how you can de-escalate situations and, and make it through. Because you can't fight everybody. So it's fair to say that's a verbal jujitsu. Verbal jujitsu, yeah. Right. Verbal. Um, sometimes in in law enforcement they call it verbal judo. Exactly. Like yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. think about how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you you talk and and my mind is 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 racing to what you're saying and. And uh, it I don't I don't remember who who come up with this quote, but I read somewhere it goes like this: the person that controls your emo your emotions, mm -hmm. the way you behave, controls you. How powerful is that? Very powerful. I don't remember if if it was Bruce Lee who said that, but mm -hmm. I was reading that. I think it was an Instagram, mm -hmm. and I says, how powerful is that? Because if somebody can know the buttons yeah. to push, yeah. and as they push, they mm -hmm. control your emotions. Because yeah. think about it, you are a police officer, you carry a gun, a right. taser, uh -huh. you have, what else you have on your tool belt? A baton. A baton. A spray. Can you imagine if somebody mm -hmm. controls you just like that, just by provoking you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And martial arts teach you that, teach, teaches you that because uh, 
like you said on that challenge coin, I mean, when you learn all those principles, and let's face it, your worst yeah, your worst enemy is yourself. It's it's, true, the, yeah. it's the internal yeah. fight right. that's the first one you have to win. Right. Before you win anything you have outside, to, you have to be good with yourself before you can be good with anybody else. Exactly. And, and and that's why that's why it's so beautiful when you when you talk about this. What's what's beyond the technique, right? Because let's face it, if you are 65, 75, uh, maybe you have an injury, you can't roll anymore. Mm -hmm. What else in martial arts can you learn? Can you sit with somebody for three hours and just talk about philosophy? Can you sit down with the kid, mm -hmm. okay, and teach him about just philosophy? Absolutely. From martial arts, mm -hmm. right? I know it's boring. I know. And people says, well, you're watching too many movies, right? Remember the old Shaolin movies, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. They put you in a horse stance for three days yeah. and teach you mantras and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And yeah, the guy with the long beard. Exactly. You know? I used to enjoy them. Me too. I'm not going to lie to you. I used to dream. I used to dream. And I used yeah. to, uh, just, uh, just a kid. I mean, I was yeah. eight years old. I used to go home and yeah. try to reproduce those yeah. movements, the mm -hmm. brain stuff, yeah. all that. Today, I know arts like uh, Tai Chi, mm -hmm. uh, all the breathing exercise, mm -hmm. the all part of it, okay. of this huge toolbox yeah. called martial arts. And a lot okay. of people criticize, well, Tai Chi is not good for fighting. So let me tell you something, it's not for fighting. Right. It's to repair your body. Mm -hmm. It's a walk in meditation where you know how to control your energy, to lower your heart rate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? L look at Rick some crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Watching How, his breathing exercises I on mean, the he, beach. And, he trains uh, yoga. He yeah. trains pranayama because yeah. it helps him. He's not just in control of his body, but he's in control of his mind. Which is the first thing you have to control. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I teach I teach firearms yeah. tactics here mm -hmm. in this room. Yeah. And what I tell people is this. Listen, mm -hmm. buying a gun, having a gun does not give you courage. Right. I says is about your software, yeah, right? Absolutely. If you have a great software, yeah. okay, yeah. then maybe you can control the hardware, right? Right. But first, you have to, you're gonna have a clear mind, a trained mind before you do anything else. Mm -hmm. If you don't have this, because think about it, you're a police officer, mm -hmm. can you imagine if you cannot control yourself and then you have a gun? You're gonna shoot everybody that looks mm -hmm. you the wrong way. It would be like giving someone, telling someone I want to teach martial arts, you give them a knife, but you don't teach them anything and they go out and they're gonna be a maniac with it. They're not gonna know what they're doing and anyone can do that. You know? Cause you started, you, through your martial arts career, you studied knife fighting too, right? Uh, Kali? Um, yeah, uh, Kitsugu Jiu Jitsu and Filipino martial arts, arts um, we called it Arnis. It was a Boston school of Arnis. Yeah, if you see a Filipino with a knife, you run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, they, yeah. Man, they, they are fast. Yeah, they are fast. fast. It's very practical, very practical thing to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, Filipino martial arts is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable skills. Uh, Jason, what else you want to add to all the listeners out there, the, 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 the guy that's 45 and beyond, okay, 50, 55 and they want to they want to start martial arts today what do you what do, what do you what do you want to say to them to, to end our our conversation i think the biggest thing i'd like to say to them is you know go for it don't worry don't be afraid it doesn't matter if you're eight you know you could be 45 and have a better mindset than a kid in his 20s um it's all about your mindset the way you think be positive um it doesn't matter how old you are. It, it, it's up. It's up in your mind, and don't be afraid. Go find a school. Go train. Um, find a teacher that when you watch him teach, like yeah, I think I could feel comfortable with him. I trust him. I, I like the way he is with the students. I think I would feel comfortable here. And don't be afraid to train. Don't be afraid to tell people either. Hey, listen, I'm not competing in UFC tomorrow, and I'm not competing in the in, you know I you know international Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Pan Ams or Abu Dhabi tomorrow. I'm going to work tomorrow, and I have a wife and kids, and I need to. You know, and and people who you train with who have control, they're gonna understand that and go easy. So it's okay to set those guidelines, but don't let that stop you. That's a small, small part. It's easy to get past that and train. I mean, Hoist Gracie's father, he trained, I think, till he was, what, in his 80s or 90s? 80s, yeah. 80s or 90s. Very anything, active. If anything, training will keep you younger 
in your mind, and if your mind is good, your body will be good. When your mind is not good and negative, your body gets sick and you get different sicknesses. So keeping your mind straight and keeping it happy will keep your body. So don't be afraid, get out there, be active, have fun, go get it, um, enjoy it. I mean, and, and it's not just learning a martial art, but all the, the people, the friends you make, the, the connections you're gonna make, and how good, even when you go home and you're tired and you're sweaty and you might have a little bit of skin abrasion, you're gonna laugh and say, you know what, I had a great, I had a great training day. You know, I, not only did I get to meet good people, but I actually got that arm bar today or I sunk that Kimura or I actually got out by, you know, putting my feet in a butterfly guard and I got uh -huh. out and I shrunk out and it, it's those small things, those accomplishments that make it all the better. And, you know, I, I really believe it. A great martial artist said it. I can't think of his name right now. It might have been uh, karate, Goju Karate or something, but he said, master the basics. If you master the basics, you'll be a great martial artist. You know, you know I think my Emoto Musashi said, you can have 10,000 techniques in your head, exactly. but it's what comes out. Like, can you exactly. get one of them to come out? Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's what So it's Art, what you're saying is don't get crazy in the beginning with the videos. Don't right. go to YouTube and see the yeah. bidding bolos because you're 45. Keep it, keep you better pull a muscle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep it simple. You know, you're going to learn a guard or half guard, ha, ha, uh, an arm bar, a shoulder crank, a neck crank, and, and you just stay with the basics. And when you have the basics, then you can move on. But, you know, when it comes down to real life situations, it's the basics that are going to save your life and help you. And all these drawn out techniques are not going to, you mm -hmm. know, help you. Just keep it simple and master your basics and practice repetition. I think the way I got good at it as a martial artist was that I just kept trying to go over the master, the basics, go over the basics and keep practicing and practicing. And it's all about how bad, you know, the more you practice, the better of a martial artist you're going to be. Right, for, from a student perspective, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What advice would you give to the school owner? That guy that wants to do right by the student. What, 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 what would you say to all the school owners out there that wants to capture those guys on that age bracket? I would say to the school owner, recognize that man or woman, who, whether what their age is, who came to your school to watch a class, that that's recognize how much guts it took for them to come there and to sit and watch. And you know, that takes guts to leave your house, your couch, and go to a martial arts school. And it's a little intimidating to go to a martial arts school and watch. So recognize that that's a person's first journey even coming to your school and he wants to, and, I, and you know, I, I think recognize that and invite that person in warmly and ask them what, what are their goals? Where do they see themselves? What do they want? And, and it helped them start in this, this great martial art journey that so many of us know and, and kind of be almost like, um, you know, like you reach out your hand, they're grabbing your hand and you're pulling them in. Right. And you're watching over them, like, you know, because you care about them, you know. And I, I think um, that's what I would say to all martial art owners to recognize that it took a lot to get that person there and help them in their journey, you know, help them with their journey, not just physically as a martial artist protecting themselves, but mentally too. Because I mean, though each new person that comes in could be a, a great friendship, you know, in the future, like that. Not just for you with them, but them with you, like that. So, fantastic, okay. Jason. Thank you for dropping all this knowledge. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that there's yeah. a lot of people out there that is yeah. gonna appreciate yeah. what you just said, yeah. because I, again, like I told you, this is not for me, okay. right? This mm -hmm. is not about us. It's about all the listeners out there that like us one day right yep, for you yeah because like us yep. one day that we we we, we had that journey we, yep. we started doing it yep. and they're about to start so yep. guys uh leave your comments um of course uh everything that you heard was our opinion correct okay and we're not afraid uh, of your feedback put your comments below the video if you want to reach us uh, just put the comments put your your, your email uh, all the information is going to be uh, uh, right below the video you can contact us anytime if you need some advice comments suggestions we're here for you Joy, can i just add one last time absolutely i was just going to say remember in the end um no matter what belt you are whether you're white blue purple black second degree red we're all, we're all students, we're all, no matter what belt always. we're at, we're always students always. and we're always learning. And that's how I look at it, um, whether I'm a black belt or a guru or what level, I'm always a student and I'm always still learning no matter what, I'll always keep learning. 
Exactly. And some people say that when you reach uh, the black belt level, uh, you start all over again. You, yeah, it's yeah. almost like you're a white belt or you're in college, you yeah. got your bachelor's and now you're going for your master's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and to finalize, I'll tell you something. If you are getting into any martial arts, and Jason will agree with me, don't think about uh, the journey, right? Don't think so much. Don't get. Right. Don't get. What I'm trying to say is, don't don't get trapped about the belts. That's right. what I want to say. When will I get this belt? How long? Exactly. Yeah. That, that, because a lot of people get trapped into that, and they don't get promoted. They get right. pissed off, and, and they ask the teacher, "When, when am I gonna get my my blue belt?" Whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Don't think about the belt. Try to get good. Right. Try try to get. Uh, uh, try to enjoy. Yeah. And on the, the the journey itself. Plus, the the best is when when you get your belt by surprise. When it's a surprise and you're not expecting. You're not even best. expecting. You know, you it's know what hidden. I mean? It's hidden in the gi and after class, you're all sweaty and bloody, and you get proven. That's the best. You can't beat that. All my my black belt, I got it. I I I gotta be honest with you. My karate master one day, uh, he put everybody in. You know, line up everybody, and we had a table and everything else. I know. I knew there was a ritual uh, in, in, in the school because, so, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. traditional uh, traditional Japanese master, you know, with them, is, everything is a ritual involved. Correct, yeah. Because they want you to remember all right. that. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, so I arrived in the school and I asked a couple of people who's getting promoted. I know it was a belt promotion. Okay. I had no idea it was me. Okay. I had no idea. Yeah. When he called my name, I... I I got yeah, I, no. I I, I started crying. I'm not gonna okay. lie to you. Uh -huh. I was a young kid. I start I start crying. I was 18 years old, and I start crying because it was so emotional. I was not expecting right. because he was not that type of guy to give you a belt. You right. had to earn it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like you said. I mean, I was not expecting, and for me, uh, was the biggest thing that somebody uh, could give me. To this day, it's my pri my priceless possession, that belt. Yeah. It's not because it's not it's not that piece of of, of, of cotton. It's not right. about that. It's the, what the, it represents. The journey, the blood, the sweat, the tears. Of. You know, and a lot of people don't understand. People don't don't do martial arts. They don't understand the attachment mm -hmm. you have for those belts. Right. Yeah. It's because they represent mm -hmm. that 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 journey. Right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.